Crucial part of any building system is saving and loading the objects you have built so that the player doesn't have to do it over and over again. I will jump to the building manager script where we will need to hold data of the object that we have just built so I will create custom class for that. Make sure that you have the class marked as serialize field and system.serializable so that we can later save it into JSON file. So this class is just holding the position, rotation and the object type of the object that we have placed. But we can't serialize multiple of these classes into JSON, so I will create another class that will be just holding a list of all of the objects. Just like that. So first we will save all of the objects that we have in the scene into individual built object data classes. Then we will have a list of all of the objects, including the position, rotation and the object type. And then we will save all of these objects into the built objects data class, which we will then serialize into JSON. Now we will just create list for all of the built objects. Just like that, so just a list of all of the built object datas. Now I will go to the visualize object function and when we are checking if we should build the object and we actually build it, I will just add the object that we have built into the list that we have just created. To the build objects list, I'm just adding new build object and inputting the correct position, rotation and the object type. If you are not sure what I have done with the build object data class, this part is just a constructor for it so that it is easier for us to then input the values when we are actually instantiating the class. So let's see if it works. Here you can see a list of all of the build objects and now I will try to place some of them. So we can see that it is adding, we can see two floor objects, the first one is at position of x minus 5, it has some rotation and so on. We can also try some walls and everything is being correctly added to the list of all the objects. Now we will just need to save and load it. We will be just serializing the whole list of the built objects into a JSON for which I also have a tutorial. So I have made the void to save the objects, load them and to make sure that we can actually use the functions that we need I will add using system.io. Just like that. So we'll begin with saving the objects. I will just create new instance of the class containing just list of the built objects. Then I will assign the built objects from the built objects list that we already have here. Then I will just serialize it as JSON and save it somewhere. It is that simple. In update, I'm also calling the void save objects when I press, for example, the key P. And in the void save objects, I'm just creating instance of the built objects data. I'm assigning all of the built objects to it. Then I'm creating the string JSON, so JSON utility, that JSON, and I'm serializing the data object. Then I'm just using file that write all text and I'm writing it to some path, so application.datapath plus then I'm creating the file itself and which file I want to save or rather which text, it is the JSON text. I will try placing some objects, then I will press the P key, I will turn off the game and sometimes it takes some time to just load the file into your assets in Unity but we can also take a look into the file explorer and in assets we can see the file containing all of the built objects. Now let's get to loading the objects. So first I will check if the file already exists. If so, then I will just again deserialize the JSON file into our built objects data class. And then I will just build all of the objects using the build function that we have already created. And it is that simple. We check if the file doesn't exist. If it doesn't exist, we can just return. Then I'm getting the string JSON, so just reading the text at the correct data path. Then I'm creating new build objects data class, which we are 
taking from the JSON utility, from JSON, from the JSON string. Then I'm just assigning all of the built objects to our list that we have. And I'm going through all of the built objects and just using the function to build them. And we are saying that we don't want to be building it from the player's hand. And because we have already saved some floor before, you can see it when I load into the game, I can already see it here. So I could add anything else I want, add some walls, some stair, and when I load it next time, it should all be here again. And you obviously can't forget to press the P key to save it. So you could make it that when you quit the application, it would save, but you can see that it works fine. And one more thing that is missing for the building system is actually to be able to destroy the objects that you have placed. Because right now they will just stay here for all the time. But because main focus of this video was just on saving and loading, I will write all the code for that and then just explain it. But the code will be pretty much similar to what we have done with placing the objects. So we will need to visualize the destroy object, then we will need to destroy it. In the player script we will need to check if we are holding the hammer item with which we will be able to destroy them and so on. So now we can play the game, all of the objects are loaded as they should be and using the crafting manager I can craft myself a hammer and when I look into one of these objects I can just destroy them but I obviously can't destroy anything else and with my bare hands I also can't destroy anything so this is working quite well. Now I will go to the player script where I have just added a variable for the build layer and for the hammer item so make sure that you set it in the inspector and then I'm checking if the health item is equal to the hammer item and the object that we are looking at is on the build layer if this is true in the building manager I'm calling the void to visualize the destroy object with the object that we are looking at otherwise I'm just ending the visualization of the destroy object and also, if the raycast is not detecting anything, which is this part, I am again ending the visualization of the destroy object. Now we will get to the building manager, where we actually have all of these voids. So we are starting off with the visualize destroy object, which is just taking in the raycasted object. I also have a variable, which doesn't have to be public, for the last visualized destroy object. And for the materials, so that once we are setting the materials to the green transparent material and then we are not looking at it, we can set it back to its normal materials. So I'm first setting the build object of that object. If this is not equal to null, it means that we are actually looking at some build object. Then I'm checking if the last visualize destroy object is not equal to the object that we are currently looking at. If this is true, I'm just ending the visualization and starting a visualization of new object because it means that we have changed the object that we are looking at. And then if you are pressing the left mouse button, I'm just destroying the raycasted object. Now when we are starting the visualization, I'm obviously setting the last visualize destroy object. I'm assigning a renderer and assigning all of the materials. And just setting the color to green because we obviously can delete the object. Then we have the end of the visualization. So if the visualized object is not equal to now, we can just get the renderer and set the materials. And I'm just setting the last visualize destroy object to now. And lastly, we are destroying the object, so we can just destroy it. And then the important part for our loading and saving system is to go through all of the built objects in our built objects lists and I'm just checking if the data of the object that we have just destroyed is equal to some data in the list. If this is true we can just remove it from the list to make sure that it is no longer loading because we have destroyed it. And this is all for the grid building system series. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions tell me down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Paul Tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects, 
or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.